It's not easy to administer the sport of football. That's why FIFA has established a number of committees to discuss any issues that arise within the beautiful game. And why so many famous names, past and present, can frequently be found at FIFA House in Zurich. Sylvie Belliberg has been involved with women's football in Canada for three decades, and she's part of FIFA's football committee, advising on all areas of the game. My life has been all about women's football ever since the First World Cup. I'm part of its history. I want to bring to the table and debate issues which affect the growth of women's football in every area. That's what's close to my heart. The development of our game in terms of competition and player protection. Because we talk a lot about what's at stake in the men's game. But there comes a time when we'll need to look more closely at the women's situation. That might be about the positive, about having greater access to contracts and the power of professional football. Or it might be about players not being treated very well. These days, Canada's women are a major force. Bronze medalists at the London Olympics and current North American champions. Beliveau has been an eyewitness to the rise of the women's game around the world. We have to go back to the year 1970, when women's football really began. But it began with certain challenges, because at the time, it was new for the organisers, and they didn't want to deal with it. Therefore, it wasn't easy to begin with. Some girls played with boys in order to be able to play at all. And then there was the setup of our first national team, which was in 1986. I'd say that up until that stage, there were plenty of girls interested in football, but perhaps they weren't necessarily athletes. Good female athletes went into other sports because they had international opportunities. When the first World Cups happened in 1991 and 1995, there wasn't much media interest. We went to China. I saw the Women's World Cup, experienced it, but there was no media interest. The matches weren't broadcast internationally like they are now. As to her own career, her playing days were largely over before her nation made any sort of impact. But she did coach the first Canadian team ever to participate in a FIFA Women's World Cup. My greatest memory from the 1995 World Cup is on the one hand that we actually made it, that we were in Sweden and got to be part of it. Beyond that, I think of our first match, because of who we were and where we'd come from. I think we put in a very good performance, and it's good having the support of the press. I was pleased as a coach that although we lost 3-2 to England, it was a very competitive match. Afterwards, a journalist came up to us and said, wow, you really played well. What a performance. You could have won it. That was great, and I still remember the journalist I'm talking about. That was a great feeling. Of course, what will be the high point of women's football in Canada is yet to come. Back in 2011, Canada were announced as hosts for the seventh FIFA Women's World Cup. It will kick off on June the 6th, 2015 in Edmonton and will feature 24 teams playing in six cities from the Atlantic to the Pacific coasts. It'll be a splendid occasion. The 2015 World Cup is certainly going to open the eyes of Canadians. And when I talk about Canadians, I'm not necessarily talking about young players who will be able to dream of seeing their heroes, idols and stars and dream of making the national team. But it's also going to have an impact on the coaches, the officials and on those who work on the implementation of the competitions. It will be important for the development of women's soccer in Canada. 